Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part four of my Logic Pro 10 201 course. In this video, I wanna talk about quantization and rhythm a bit, and I'll also use the drum machine designer instrument to build a very rough beat, just so I have some rhythm in my scratch song before I go in and record a scratch vocal in the next video. So I've got my drum machine designer loaded up with the Futura kit loaded, and this is just a preset I loaded from the library. In future videos, I'll show you how to sample and build your own drum kit, but in this video, I'm just gonna use this stock kit for now. So the instruments that I'm gonna use from this are the kick, the snare, the clap, and then the hi-hat on F-sharp one, and the open hi-hat on A-sharp one. Now, the beat I'm gonna play in, I can play in um, on my keyboard, just the kick and snare and clap. The hi-hat's gonna be moving too fast, for me to, to play that in, so I'm gonna use the brush tool to play that in. So here's the kick and the snare pattern. Just something simple like that. So what I'll do is I'll just set the playhead one bar before my first MIDI region here, and hit R to record. All right, so I'll just select these regions. I'll press Command U to set my cycle range around these regions, and then I can toggle my cycle mode with C. So this is just gonna play on a loop. So let me open up the MIDI region for the drum beat that I just played in. And you'll see um, that the very first note kind of overlaps the very first bar a bit. So when I hit play, you miss that first note. One way to fix notes that are slightly before a MIDI region enters is to turn on your chase notes function. So if you go up to file, project settings, MIDI, and then go to chase, and then I can click this notes option, and I wanna make sure I also choose this in no transpose instrument channel strips. This includes drums. So now when a note is slightly before the playhead, it'll actually still play back that note. So that's a pretty handy feature to have on so that your front end notes that might be slightly before the front of a region or slightly before the cycle range, those notes will still play. Okay, so let's talk a bit about quantization. So if I select all of these notes and I go to my time quantize option over here and I look at these top values here, these are all your standard or straight values. So I said before, a one one note is a whole note. So all of these notes are gonna to quantize to the bar line or to the measure line. So they quantize to the front end of where a whole note would be, even if the note length is not a whole note. And that's one thing to remember here. The position of a note can be on a whole note, but the length of the note may not actually be a full whole note. So if I go to a half note, now it quantizes the notes to every two beats. So there's two beats or two quarter notes within a half note. A half note is one half of a whole note. If I go to a quarter note, you'll see that it quantizes on every quarter note, on every beat. And then if I go to an eighth note, you'll see that it quantizes to notes in between quarter notes. Now if I change my grid value up here to an eighth note, you'll see that all of my notes are quantized to the grid lines. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Your grid lines can be different than your quantization value. So this area right here, it, everything sounds good until you get to this section. That's not the rhythm I played. So what I'm gonna try to do is quantize to a 16th note instead and see how these come off of that eighth note grid. Let's change the grid to a 16th note now. And you can see that all of those notes snap to a 16th note on the grid. Now, when you go beyond 16th notes, you start going into really, really fast note territory. A 32nd note is a half of a 16th note, and a 64th note is half of a 32nd note. 
So what you're doing here is you're constantly subdividing the rhythm. Whole note, half is, is half of a whole, quarter is quarter of a whole, eighth is eighth of a whole, and so forth and so on. So there's technically 64 64th notes in a whole note or a measure or a bar of music. Now, when we get down to these values, these are all triplet values. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few of them because I want you to kind of understand how they work because I am gonna use the brush tool to draw in some triplet values. So let me just add in a little hi-hat here. I'll use this open hi-hat as an example. That's a whole note, roughly a whole note in length. If I were to use this option that says a half triplet, notice that it's called a third note. So imagine if we could just make this note about one third of a whole note in length. I'm gonna trim them up just a bit. And watch what happens when I uh, quantize these to a half triplet. They are equally divided, three notes equally divided over the space of a whole note. So if I play this back, gives us sort of this kind of weird polyrhythm. So let's shorten these up some more. We already know that if we put four of these per measure, this is four quarter notes. And this would quantize fine if I use the one quarter note option. But what if we use the quarter note triplet option? This is gonna quantize these to one sixth notes. So instead of four per bar, there's gonna be six per bar. So let's shorten these even more. And let's try to squeeze six of these in the space of one bar. And I'll just drag over these. Hit Q to quantize. By the way, you can hit Q right here when you already have a value selected, or you can press Q on your keyboard. So now it's equally spaced all six of those notes over one bar of music. So again, this can be used to create some kind of cool polyrhythm if you like. Use a different hi-hat. If you wanna sort of juxtapose sort of that triplet feel with a straight feel, you can do that. So when we start getting into some higher values, um, higher than that, like our eighth note triplet, this is called a 12th note. So imagine trying to fit three of these per beat and 12 of them per measure. Notice that I, when I'm adding these in, I'm, I'm doing this with no snap on, I'm doing that on purpose, just so the placements are off. And then when I go and quantize them, the placement will be on. So now I have 12 notes equally spaced over a whole note. Let's pull this down to a short hi-hat sound here. So one thing I could do is I could pull these kick drums back a bit to align with this hi-hat note and then quantize those as well. And you get a fully swung or triplet feel beat. I could also change the grid value to match the quantization value, turn my snap back on, and I can go in here and I can add additional kick notes in the beat here. Again, that's assuming that I wanna create something with a triplet feel, not a, not a straight feel. This song has a straight feel, so I'm gonna go back to the original. Now, when you get into some of these faster triplet values, um, these are not really possible to play in well, at least with your hands. You kind of just have to type them in. So I hardly ever use the actual quantization value, but when you use the brush tool, the value that you have selected in the quantization menu is the value that's drawn in. So I'm gonna use the brush tool and eighth notes, 16th notes, and 16th note triplets to build out sort of like a trap style hi-hat pattern. So I'll just start with three eighth notes and notice you can just click and drag. Let's go with 16th note triplet here. And then I'll go back to eighths. Three more of those. Let's do a 16th note this time. And then I'll use an eighth. And then I'll go back to triplet 16ths. Now you don't actually have to um, switch back and forth between these. Like I could probably just stay on 16th and 16th triplets. 
like for example here we're at three eighths instead of clicking and dragging i could just type in three sixteenth notes with sixteenth note spaces between them but just for sake of demonstration i'm going ahead and selecting the eighth note so I'll add those back in so i've got eight and three sixteenth let's do another um round of these if you just hold option we can just click and drag them over and repeat and we'll do another one at the end but maybe this one we'll do three two eighths we'll keep it simple and then we'll do three more eighths and three sixteenths and the cool thing is like once you start creating these different patterns you can kind of just like i said copy and paste them um let's do four eighths but let's make this hi-hat an open hi-hat so this is closed Let's do that. And then I'll take that eight and three sixteenths pattern again. Let's do a couple sixteenth, uh, standard sixteenths. There we go. And I'll drag over these six, three sixteenths, go back to eighths, and then two more sixteenths to wrap it up. So let's see what that sounds like. Cool, and I'll just drag over all this, hit Command R to repeat it. And now I've got this entire passage with a hi-hat pattern. I'm also gonna drag over all of these kicks and snares and make them the same velocity here. There we go. Cool, so I've got just a basic uh, hi-hat idea there. I am gonna do some different things with it, like changing up the different hi-hats, so it's not the same closed hi-hat sound the whole time, but we'll get to that in a future video. One last thing I wanna show you is that you can actually set your quantization value before you even start playing. If you go up to your region parameters up here with nothing selected, so just click on the background, nothing is selected, go to this quantize menu, and right now it says off. Choose a quantization value like a 16th note, and then just start playing. Every region that you record in will automatically quantize to this quantization value. So if you know that you're gonna be doing a lot of 16th note uh, beats and rhythms, you can just set the 16th note as the default so you never have to go back into piano roll and quantize it. So let me just try that out. So now when I go into piano roll, all of these notes have automatically been quantized to a 16th note. That's a feature that's called input quantize. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.